Should you do live demos? And if you record them, how should you go about it? I'm here at the Zojoji Temple in Tokyo with the Tokyo Tower behind also and want to talk to you about some approaches that you can use for demos. I was just at AmpConf and there were a lot of demos of course and I even saw a live demo. This is something that is a little funny. Most people that you talk to will have had a bad experience doing a live demo at some point. I definitely have. I've had one at a WordCamp talk go bad. But a lot of times it can be exciting. If you're demoing something live, people have a sense that they're in on something happening right now. For example, there was a really good demo that was showing AMP analytics, how it was running. I got a sense part of it didn't go perfectly, but it didn't matter because there was already a backup. There was a certain link that should have opened a certain version of the page in an A-B test, but it still worked fine. And sometimes if you're demoing something and something goes wrong, like let's say you're demoing to a client and you <laughs> discover a bug, you might think it's the end of the world because you're in that moment. It's like if you're performing on stage, it's not as big of a deal usually to the people that are seeing it. There's the excitement that comes from getting a live demo in. But there's some cases where it's a little bit too high pressure to demo something live. For example, if it's the end of a project for a client, or if it's a really long sequence of events at a talk, you don't wanna to have to remember everything, you'll be under a lot of stress, so it's good to have things recorded sometimes. You can also get a sense, if this is a client demo, of how much the clients need things to be perfect or to not have bugs. If you get a lot of questions from clients like, okay, what about that part over there? Is that working now? It looks like that isn't working. If they don't get a sense that this is a work in progress, it might be a good idea to have the demo pre-recorded. You'll know from the clients though, sometimes the clients really do appreciate the live demos because it gives it an informal sense and it lets them ask questions about something. For example, okay, that worked. What happens if you do this? If you click here, what happens? You can get a sense of this by how many times they ask that question, also in how much they expect things to be working right all the time, even if it's a work in progress. And the other nice thing about doing recorded demos is that clients can take the recording if you upload it, let's say to Google Drive and share it with other stakeholders, or if they can't make the meeting for some reason, it is much more scalable. Your work is going to be seen by many more people. They can share it with their superiors, as it were, to show that your work is being successful. You can share it, like I've had some screen cast that I did of demo work for clients, and I've shared it with many people, like with my team lead, I could share it when I'm talking about my role with the director of people services. There's a whole portfolio around it. Whereas if you just do it live in one place, it's a little bit awkward. Maybe you could record the Zoom session or Hangout session, but it's nice to have a polished recording sometimes. If you do go and end up going with a recording, let's talk about some steps that you can take for that. If you're doing a lot of these, I would recommend getting a professional tool like ScreenFlow 8, which I use. I'm not an affiliate. You can do a lot of the things that you could do in ScreenFlow 8 that you'll need in QuickTime and iMovie for free, essentially. But it is a little bit quicker, like you can record within ScreenFlow 8 and then it'll just add it to the current document or the current recording. Whereas in QuickTime, you might have to be doing a lot of drag and dropping, recording and selecting from the library. It's just a little bit quicker if you're doing a lot of these. It has nice features for zooming in and everything also. You might think about getting a tool like that if you're doing a lot of these. Also, you can do editing when you're doing a screencast recording. If there's something that takes a while to load, it's going to be a little bit easier. Instead of just starting the new take over, edit it out. Maybe you can edit out five seconds when something's loading a little bit too long. It also helps to narrate the screencast recording from the beginning and start with the biggest benefit, not the actual feature you're demoing. For example, one thing that we did for a client once was having a way to clone 
posts. One technical way you might explain it is there's now a way to clone posts that clones the full WP post objects and enables selective use of certain post properties. But another way to say that that would be directed at the client and the benefit is this feature makes it much easier to write new posts that you have to write several times. And then you can get more into the specific details, but recording the demo video actually teaches you quite a bit going through the process of what the actual benefit is to the people. It's not exactly all of the technical details. You'll get a sense from your clients how much of the technical details they like. Sometimes there'll be one client that's like a project manager. Sometimes there'll be a client that's like an architect and will really like diving into the details. But it's good to front load your demos with the benefit at the beginning with your statement of the benefit. And then you can go into a little bit more of the technical details, kind of like a reverse pyramid. Like if you read a news story, you read the most important parts of the top. And then as you go down, they're a little bit less important. It's helpful though, going through the process of recording your demo screencast, you can go through and edit some of the parts out that weren't quite as effective, but clients have generally appreciated having screencast recordings to share, or actually, I think I only did that with one client that specifically shared it out with several, but in that case, it helped quite a bit. But usually live demos go pretty well if your clients are understanding, or if you're in a WordCamp or a conference and it's a discrete task that you have to show that's pretty well mapped out. And you can even have a fallback in case for some reason it doesn't go exactly as you expected. But like I mentioned earlier, a lot of pros have experience with live demos not going very well. I think the people that you want to respect you will respect you. Maybe someone that's never done a live demo, if you have something that goes wrong, is going to think you're a goof. But usually people will have experience with this. And if it's something that's small and appropriate, I think it can make sense to do a live demo. It's pretty exciting to be part of something when you can see someone behind the desk and they're actually working it instead of just the recording where it could be happening anywhere. It's not really a big deal that you're a part of it. You could watch it on YouTube, but when it's live, it is pretty exciting and it adds a whole new element. But it's good to have the recorded version of it also for clients so they can share with other people. And it's a really good process. It teaches you a lot going through the process of getting a demo of something. Hope this has helped. I have to go around, maybe see a little bit of the temple today, just wrapping up the trip for AmpConf here. But let me know what approaches you've taken and what kind of challenges that you've had with live demos.